Oh, why couldn't I have a normal hobby like playing golf or fishing? Ah, who knows? Anyway, all right. So here's what I've done. I uh, I got that oil line fabricated. This will this will be my oil source. Uh, basically, it goes uh, from the tank to uh, do, do, do goes up to the oil cooler, then through the filter before it goes to the pump. And then from the pump to the turbo, yada, yada, yada. Uh, I was able to get this guy fabricated last night. So I came out this morning, and I played hell getting it snaked in here. But uh, I think I got it just about where I want it. I can... Uh, so anyway, except for this. So uh, the only way I could get it in here was just to have it it's sitting on top of the axle. Ideally, I want it <clears throat> below the axle kind of hugging the kind of the top of the frame here as close as i can i kind of you know I, I i want it protected um but it is what it is for now uh maybe in the future maybe i can come up with another idea so anyway uh what i'm gonna do is pop those two bolts out and there's two bolts on the other side and I can uh, slide this axle out of the way, get the oil line down, put the axle back in. We'll be ready to rock and roll. So that's the game plan for back here and up here. Oil line comes in, snakes through all this cluster. Um, now, now that I've got all my switches in the way. Anyway, we're coming back to the uh, switches later, but anyway, oil line comes up here, and I left myself a little too much extra, but here's what I'm going to do. Slide my butt on this hot truck bed. Uh, if, if I were to cut, you can see if I were to make an incision, Dr. Dr. Mike making an incision here um it's i'm not gonna have a means of getting my flaring tool on here so what i'm thinking about doing is actually make my incision here cut cut this off and i can always um cut this i can cut this back uh to match this and i can always reflare this uh, tube so that's what we's gonna do I'm pretty sure I had to do the same thing with this uh, originally you can see where I was gonna cut it but again I had the same issue um, you're, you're kind of limited to how close you can get to this radius and still get uh, your ferrule on there and get your uh, flaring tool on there so that's what we're gonna do we'll probably make a cut Shoop, right there old Dr. Blanky. Anyway, I gotta go back through. I gotta tighten up some of these lines. I had to take some of these lines out of the way to get that get that tube uh, snaked in there. It's coming together pretty well. I am I'm impressed with what I've done. I like it. So, all right, let me uh, let me get to work. Daylight's a waste in, and I've got minutes before it gets too fucking hot for me so catch y'all later all right so making some headway i was able to get the uh, the axle out and um, i took the opportunity to take the brake calipers out and just get the oil pipe down where i need it then i could put the uh, calipers back in so the uh, hydraulic hoses actually run over top of the oil hose here and then I got the axles all buttoned back up as you can see so now uh, I'm going to uh, make my way forward and uh, cut those uh, cut the ends of the tubes uh, reflare them and see if I can't get those buttoned up we are we are on track all right guys I had some questions about how to do uh, the flares, you know, how do, how do I do the flares? So, uh, 
you know, I've only got, you know, just a couple more to do and I'm done making all my hard lines. So, uh, I decided I'll put you guys right in the driver's seat of the old jet cart. Congratulations. I think I've only sat in a seat maybe twice. So you guys are halfway there, almost caught up to me. So uh, if you guys can see, I made a little uh, Sharpie mark where I'm going to uh, need to cut just a little bit of excess off where I have this uh, flare here. We're gonna cut this tube back a little bit and then uh, slide my ferrule back just a little bit more. So it's probably a bad idea to take the ferrule completely off because what ends up happening is it just left you open for uh, starting your next flare before putting the ferrule back on and then you got to cut the flange back off or the flare and uh, put your ferrule back on. So it makes for a pretty bad day pretty quick. So Anyway, that's about as far back as my ferrule is going to go. So here's what I do. After you've made your mark where you're going to make your cut, get you a set of pipe cutters, tube cutters, whatever you want to call them. I line that blade up with that mark that I made and go ahead and tighten her down until she just sits just on there. Now what you do is for every time you rotate, you want to turn the knob just a little bit and it'll push that blade into the soft tube so, and every time I rotate I turn the knob just a little bit more you'll feel it if you don't tighten the knob you'll feel it kind of loosen up on you like that so kind of loosen up on you so you just keep tightening her up every, every revolution just give her another little twist eventually will break through like so nice clean little cut for the most part my my blades getting kind of dull um, but it, you can't really see it but it left me a pretty pretty clean cut on there um, I'll have to just do a little bit of deburring these little guys usually come with a little deburring tool just kind of give her a little kiss just to round that edge off a little bit and I would say that is going to be good enough get as much of that garbage out of there as you can you can use an air hose on the other end and just blow that crap out Anyway, I'll come back and I'll blow that out before I install it. But for the sake of the video, I will press on. So once you got it cut, deburred, now I'm gonna grab your cheap Chinese made tube cutter or not your uh, flanging tool sorry open her up in my case this thing's only got very few fittings left in her. She started the threads on these started getting galled up and it's increasingly more difficult to do my flares now she is Getting pretty locked up. Damn it. Fucking Chinese junk, man. All of our shit is made from fucking cheap Chinese pop metal. And they probably keep all the good metal for the damn selves. We're just gonna have to roll with this. So, uh, on these tools, you got like a backside and you have the side it. It's actually going to create your flare. So you want that towards out. Make sure you got the right size selected. We're on a half inch tube. I'm sure there's some 
magical math calculation for how much protrusion you want because that's where your flange your flare is going to be so what i like to do is i kind of eyeball it actually there is no kind of about it i do eyeball it um, i give it maybe a good eighth inch usually gives me a pretty good flare um, any more than that you run the risk of um, your threaded piece not being able to fit over uh, the flare um, and also you don't want you don't want this flush if you can see that you don't want like the end of your tube to be flush with this you won't uh, generally I've noticed I just don't have enough uh, uh, flare for my ferrule it, so anyway just keep that in mind I always just keep uh, it looks to be about an eighth of an inch not too much but just enough now having more difficulties with my flaring tool that's what I get for spending 38 bucks on this if that I would have to say if you know you plan on making a lot of these flares spend the money buy yourself like a really nice flaring tool like something that'll last this I knew it it wasn't a lot of flares that I had to make but I would, expected this tool to last a little longer than it did I mean, it's just all sorts of metal galled up in the threads here. All right, once you got it on, go ahead and button her down. Um, what I do, I'll tighten one side down just a little bit and just keep uh, alternating sides just little by little. And what that does is that will um, try to keep, I try to keep like a, almost like an even pressure on the tube. Because what happens is I've noticed if you crank down on one almost all the way and like you have like a huge gap in here, uh, you end up, you see it kind of oblong the tube. And then when you go to put your actual flaring tool on there, this guy, this guy will eventually fit. Yeah. on here and uh, it drives drives that little cone into the tube and makes your flare um, but it'll create an oblong shaped flare um, that's just something I've learned over the years so anyway let me tighten down on this one a little bit more It is hot, hot, hot out here. If you can't already tell. I'm going to try to speed up this process because I'm sweating my balls off. And this is the last little bit of work I got to do for tonight. I'm just waiting on some parts to come in tomorrow. And I can start installing that oil tank. Alright. Let me come back to this side. If I can get any more. I think the thread is completely locked up. Motherfucker. I think that's about as much as I'm going to be able to get out of it. She is not happy. Yeah, it's just bending my tube at this point. Right, we'll stop that. Bend my tube back. Alright gonna have to work with it. Slide your flare on here, your little cone, the plunger, I think that's what they call it. I think it's a plunger. So I put this on, just line, try to line it up the best you can, kind of loosen it, tighten it a little bit, it'll uh, kind of seat itself. 
take your wrench and you don't have to go too crazy with this. You just snug her down and it'll feel pretty uniform, like pretty consistent and then you'll feel it just kind of tighten up and that's all you need. Like you don't have to go crazy with the ooga doogas. And that's it. I mean, that's now loosen it. And it should be and Back around, just take this guy off, take a wrench again, and if the odds are in your favor, you can get this off. Uh, she's getting locked up. Let's see if this side. There we go. Ah, money. Split them in half. There you go. You got a flare. Yeah, I like that. That one looks good. It's co pretty consistent, uh, round, not uh, oblong, egg shape or anything. Now you just slide your ferrule back on here. All right, I fixed it. It's all nice and real pretty. I like it. Um, it's when we're, I noticed the flare diameter will be almost the same as uh, the this diameter of the uh, ferrule that's what what i've generally noticed uh, it fits on there it's seated good and now you can snake your stuck threaded piece money just like that sort of all right so I made the uh, flares, or actually I had to cut the tubes a little bit, I made the flares and uh, got the union in there. And we are good. It's beautiful. Now I'm just going to have to go through every single one of these, tighten them up, and then I'm just waiting for some uh, brackets to come in and uh, should be able to get that tank mounted probably tomorrow, maybe uh, Monday or Tuesday, whenever, the, whenever they show up. But, we are, oh yeah, and then uh, uh, I'm going to have to take the tank back to my welder and have another um, a fitting, like a bung, welded to the tank uh, for the oil pressure valve regulator return, whatever you want to call it. And then uh, I only have, really I just have like one more oil tube to make, easy stuff. 